Thank you for having me here, and uh, thank all of you for standing up, but, or for staying here. I'm going to start with a question, right? This is not a trick question, but it is. Um, how many of you believe that you always save the best for last? Okay, 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 okay. That, was, that, wasn't, that wasn't enough. Um, considering that I am last, give me some encouragement uh, here, and then I'm going to ask the question again. How many of you believe that you save the best for last? That's going to bring some in. That's going to bring some in. The reality, you realize you're last, right? Because you go after me. Get it? You go after me? It's a terrible joke. No worry. So anyhow, I'm going to talk about automation and labor, and the two are kind of hand in hand. Uh, and the, the theme is battling the labor pressures, right? We all, we all know what that means. And actually, as I'm reading the news, I'm an avid uh, reader of, of, of many publications. This morning, Spain's first robot-run restaurant set to open in Madrid this year. What the heck is that? I'll be curious, because realize Spain does not have an employment problem, right? With 30 to 50% unemployment, that's not the issue. So I'll be curious to see what they're doing. But anyhow, automation is coming, or maybe it's already here. Let me tell you a little bit about Profitality, then I move on. Profitality, we're an industrial engineering consulting firm. Uh, yes, I do have a pocket protector somewhere and a slide ruler, but I don't, I don't take it out in public. Uh, and what we try to do is work, work with companies to try to improve unit economics. If you have the right unit economics, more sales, more throughput, less costs, whether it's capital operating costs, you'll survive, you'll succeed. If you don't, you won't. In, in the job of doing that, we work on what's called the functional aspect of design, the brick and mortar, the size of the facility, the equipment, the labor, the processes, the, 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 the platforms that you use. And we may join hands with WD partners, you saw them earlier this, this morning, where they work on the form aspect of design, right? Form and function, what comes first? Well, you know, they sort of go next to each other. So that's what we do, that's what we are. Uh, somebody, often I get asked, how, who have you worked for? I don't remember if Restaurant News is still here, uh, but if you grab every year, they come up with the top 100, right? So last June, they came up with one. And if you look at all the brands that are there, we, one of the executives have touched around 62% of those brands. So we, we have a tremendous amount of breadth of experience that with your depth of experience of your brand, um, it works out real well. Enough of that. You've seen the headlines, right? I don't need to bore you with the headlines. I can fill out the whole presentation. The robot did it, right? Uh, the first picture there is a fully automated, bold company or concept in, in uh, Boston, uh, done by MIT students, by, by engineers, right? The self-driving cars. Uh, you saw uh, Wow Bao has a system like this. That's why I think this is from Chicago. Right, even even the, the, the little stands for your for your food, so you know where to pick up your food. So automation is is here, uh, but a lot of it is related to how restaurants are struggling, keeping up to make money to have unit economics. Some of them raise their prices. That's dangerous within itself. Some of them go out of business and they shut down. Right, so. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of challenges. You've seen this one. There's a university, I think I wrote it there, Carnegie Mellon Little Carts take food to the students, right? Very, very interesting, very interesting stuff. Um, in San Francisco, there's a concept that I've, I haven't visited. I did talk to the, to the developers, also engineers. Um, they wanted some input from me as they were coming along, but it makes burgers from, from the ground zero, right? It's pretty interesting stuff, very, very interesting. Now, this is what's really driving the, one of the issues is, you know, this headline, I could put 2018, 2019, 2017, heck, I can go 1960 when I was born. Prepare for increased activity around wage and paid leave. It just happens. I mean, it just, our, 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 our government uh, representatives just continue to put the pressure on the restaurants. So it's not gonna stop. Let's, let's get that. Everywhere you go, you see automation. This is a collage I created for the last NRA, whether it's a robot that makes salads or burritos or, or, or uh, sushi or takes order. Uh, I, one of my favorite ones, the one right up there, right? It's a glass. As you're training someone, it shows up in the glass. It's just some interesting stuff coming, very, very interesting stuff coming. Uh, ANAFM just happened, the National Association of Food Equipment Manufacturers, same, you would have seen the same. A lot more activity. So it's automation here or not? Let's continue on. I was at Burger King for many years, uh, for the first 17 years of my uh, uh, 
restaurant career, and, 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 and I, I did a lot of automation. We had a automated customer order terminal, automated fryer, bun and patty feeder, automa even started working on automated assembly line. Back when we had the automated order taking, you could put money in, but your change came out in quarters. You felt you were in, in Vegas, right? Because credit cards were not around, believe it or not, in QSR. Back then, credit cards were not accepted in QSR, but you know, you hit the bingo, right, the lot lotto, so, but it was there. Uh, there was a lot of others. There was a, uh, an Arby's, I believe, in um, somewhere in Colorado that had a fully front counter kiosks, all around front counter, as well as, uh, I believe, Frymaster had an automated fryer, fry dispensers, control systems. It's been around. It's been, it's definitely been around. Sometimes you need to think yourself, and this is one of the issues why automation has gone slow, is that you want to be leading edge, but you do not want to be bleeding edge. Bleeding edge is expensive, right? Whether you do it internally as a, as a company or, or as a, a, an equipment supplier, right? And timing is everything. So then, uh, and, and along the way, we, I also got a, a, a patent on a video drive-through. What that meant is you went to the drive-through, we saw you, you saw me, you saw the order. It was pretty cool, right? Again, uh, bleeding edge, perhaps a little too early. And, and what's in that box, most of you know what a cathode ray tube is, right? Not a plasma screen, right? The TVs were about that deep. That's what's in that box, a TV, believe it or not. This is 1990s, early 1990s. Anyhow, what's happened? And this is my favorite. This is my favorite. I know all of you do searches. If you do a search, AMF, the bowling company, AMF, fully automated restaurant, you'll get a video of this. The music will kill you. It's just great, great 1960s driving music. But what will kill you more is, that's your POS. You want more fries? You hit plus. You want less fries? You hit minus. Really cool. 1960s. 1960s. It's just, it, it's just crazy. So why is it not mainstream yet? Well, you ask, why not? Right? And you say, well, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, the British are coming. They were coming too. Right? But they were, so it's supply and demand, really. When you think about it, supply and demand. I'm not an economist, but if you take the blue line, and that's labor cost, it's going up. If you assume automation is coming down in cost, that's the other line, somewhere along the way they're going to meet. And in some cases, they've already met. And people are reaping the benefits of automation. One of the things I'm going to do today is, is get you to think differently about automation. The definition of automation is critical. Now, one other piece that, that's impacting this industry significantly is the availability of labor. You know, our, our employees would rather go Uber drivers. You know, what, what, is, what, what is the comment before? 60-some percent of all cars in San Francisco are Uber drivers? I can't believe it. Go ahead, stand in a corner and watch the little U or Lyft or any other. Uh, it's, it's pretty significant. So there's a supply and demand issue here. As, as labor costs go up, automation comes down, it'll be more affordable. So why automation, right? Well, what, what's driving automation? Everybody knows the answer to that, right? Labor. First and foremost, labor, although I'm going to share with you some other ideas later, it's not only labor, but labor is the primary one that drives automation. Just, I don't have enough, too expensive, let's automate. Now, my favorite, favorite question for any client is, is why, why don't we have automation? What's out there, out, there, out there that's automated that I can use? But if you think about it, something that you can act on even more so today, as you wait for automation, it's called efficiency. You know, probably the most abused word in the industry, uh, efficiency. And efficiency comes in many ways, is your processes, your procedures, the equipment platforms you use, the, the technology that you use, the design, the place design. If you drive an efficient design, you will be able to drive labor cost reductions. Forget about automation alone. I'm just saying if you do it right, uh, you'll be able to do that. Both of them are interrelated, one to the other. And the reason you have to do it is because if you don't do that, you will not have the right unit economics. You may have the right unit economics today, but you're not going to have it in the future if you stay where you are. You have to continue to innovate from the standpoint of the functional aspect of design, what, what we do for a living. So, but automation is not only about labor, right? Everybody recognizes that. It's about customer service. It's about consistency and quality. Right, because a machine can be a heck of a lot more consistent when doing something than a human. Whether you like it or not, that's the case. We're just inconsistent machines. So product consistency, and at the end of the day, it can also drive more peak hourly throughput. What do I mean by that? Well, 
if you have to add another body to, to get more sales, it's going to cost you. Whereas if you use technology correctly in automation, you'll drive more sales with the same labor. By the way, when you drive more sales with the same labor, your labor costs come down, correct? Your P&L, you hit a line item and you'll see it goes down from 26 to 24 to 22%. So a lot of other benefits. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I go back to this, to this buzzword, unit economics. But you gotta have the right unit economics. And to the top line is usually better than the bottom line, than, than the cost. But you gotta do both. Now, this is a question for all of you. Again, go and participate. You participated well on the first question. You raise your hands, right? You don't have to say anything, but I do want you to think. What does automation look like? Would you recognize it if you saw it, right? And what is your definition of automation? Is this it? Right? The Jetsons. To most people, when you say automation, that's what comes out. Not quite, right? Not quite. That is not here, although I just showed you some examples that suggest it's beginning to show up, but there's a lot more, right? My, my definition of automation is much, much, much more broad, right? My definition of automation is any, any equipment, technology, processes, procedures, design, service that allows me to get service to the guests without more labor, okay? Now it's a lot more broad, and I'm going to take you through a journey here a little bit with what, what I mean. So it could be any one of these, correct? It could be a slicer and a dicer. It could be, right? Because if, if it took me three hours to do something, now it takes me 15 minutes, gee, right? I'm resolving the issue that's driving my desire to have automation. It could be a bulk fry dispenser. You've seen those in McDonald's all over the place. Or it could be that crazy restaurant I showed you that exists today. I, I haven't physically been in it, but it exists today. Uh, in, in Boston, probably, I think it's close to Harvard, because it's a bunch of MIT students. But customer-operated kiosks is automation, right? In, in my, sorry about that, in my definition, why? Because I don't have to take the order, I don't have to make cash. So you see how it's beginning to say, okay, yeah, I, I, I sort of buy it. What's the best kiosk? Anybody, anybody want to guess what the best kiosk is? Your cell phone. Right? Be careful what you wish for. Because if you don't have an engine, somebody talked in one of the panels, if you don't have an engine to be able to subside or to, to produce what the cell phone can give you, you're going to be in trouble. Almighty Starbucks felt that when they went online, when they did their online, uh, their, their uh, smartphone, right? They forgot to put the engine in the back, and customers that were coming in that were not online customers or, or, or smartphone customers walked away because there was a mass of people. They fixed it, but just remember, if you're going to have more input, you better have capability in the output. And along with that comes these kiosks, right? These, these little shelves that you've seen. Uh, every time I see a shelf, to me, it's like, um, man, free lunch, right? You know, <laughs> maybe it's where I came from, but anyhow, that's okay. Uh, but um, it works. To, to these co concepts of use it, it works, right? It's very, very convenient. Panera Bread started with 2.0 and all that, so. Here's a statistic for you. Here's the engineer in me. If you think about order, cash, pickup, and you put a time to it, time and motion, we're industrial engineers, so that's what we do for a living, uh, and you add all the other pieces that you need to do to deliver customer service, producing sandwiches and things of that nature, 20 to 25% is order, cash, and pickup. 20 to 25% of the work content. Huge, right? So if you don't believe kiosks and the smartphone ordering and online ordering is automation, right? You should try to start changing your mind. At the end of the day, you do this, there's more unit economics, right? Better. Better service, because you have more top line, better bottom line, because you spend less money. What's interesting is this is applied across all, right? Um, you heard one of the speakers talk about uh, full service restaurants having pay on the pay on the table. By the way, I think pay on the table is gonna be around for everybody soon because of credit card fraud. Europe always leads us. I mean, go, you don't know what's gonna happen here, go to Europe and, and see what they're doing. Uh, but one interesting concept, and I think, I, I think there was someone from Beejas, I don't know if he's still here, or he or she's here, but Beejas has an interesting concept. You order on your smartphone or online. When you get there, they fire your order, and you go sit down. So you get your order a lot quicker, and guess what, you also turn the table faster. There's something for the guests, there's something for the, for the brand. So it goes across all the industries, all the, all the forms of service. How about third-party aggregators, right? There's been enough talk about this. 
That's, how, that, that's automation. For me, they take the order, they make a cash, and they deliver for you, right? Comes at a cost, <laughs> and it's not pretty at times. So it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. I, I write a lot in the industry, and one of the articles I wrote was third-party aggregators, are they friend or are they foe? Right? The foe means at 30% cost, that hurts. If you got any other additional costs, there's not much to, to have to the bottom line. But if it's additional sales and you have the same labor, it's a different way of looking at it. So are you, is it right for you? But it can help with the, help with the labor pieces. I want to give you a paradigm shift. Uh, often when somebody's trying to sell you uh, a piece of equipment, let's say, that saves time, they talk about, well, it saves you 17% of time. So you're going to save 17% labor. Not really, right? Not really. The only way you save labor is you take bodies out. That's the only way you save labor. And you have to aggregate. And you have to be able to change the schedule. And I'm going to, I'm going to close the presentation later on with a schedule just to give you a perspective. That's how you get labor savings. And that's how you get a payback. Right? This is a quote from um, uh, Wendy's Director of Equipment Engineering. Show me how it helps cut a person in my kitchen at $15 per hour, we're soon going to be closing restaurants. It's a reality, right? It's a reality. Often I get asked, oh, well, you're taking people's jobs. Listen, it's, it's jobs that people don't want to take. It's either you do it eventually and you, you cut back two or three hours that it's not showing, or you close the whole restaurant and you lost 40 people. So it's not a bad word. It's not definitely a bad word. But automation doesn't stop at the restaurant. Automation also extends to, to the design process. Right? We use computer simulation to, to simulate a full restaurant. Uh, and this is a video I'm not going to show. This happens to be for a, uh, a hospital cafeteria that needed to do like 400 transactions in an hour or a half an hour. And they call, brought us in to work next, next uh, to someone like WD Partners to say, okay, well, which of these designs give me the most throughput? So we put some science behind it. We don't have to build it. Uh, so we apply simulation to do what we call uh, uh, smart design, smarter design. You visualize, you optimize, and you're able to, to go out to market with a product that's better and, and needs less changes. Another one is around labor management. I'm going to touch on this one quite a bit more because this is something you can do today. Labor management, right? It's, it's, the, it's not only labor management is not only the back of house system. It's what's in it. It's how do, you, how do you produce it. The way we look at labor management is right labor in the right place at the right time. It's not about cutting costs per se, right? Although usually it results in that because if you have the right labor in the right place at the right time, you have more sales, more throughput, better unit economics. There's that word again. So how do we do labor management, right? We start with a blank sheet of paper. Uh, first thing you do is forget that you spend 22% on labor and everything you do will cost you 22% on labor. That's not the case, right? The labor you're gonna to use to do something, it depends on how long it takes. It doesn't matter if you sold for $10 or $1. If it takes 30 seconds to do something, give the restaurants 30 seconds. Otherwise, you're, you're kidding yourself. So we do a task list and we create standards, like the time standards to each of them. Any process you have that's crazy, something like this, you wanna re-engineer it. This is about understanding your labor. We do process mapping and we say, what, what does it take to do this? I think this was a burrito for some concept. Uh, I don't remember now. But you know, we call this a spaghetti diagram. Right? Then, then you go into actually creating labor guidelines. If you have the right time and you know your product mix and you know how many times you do it and you know the sales, you can create labor guidelines. That tells you how many people do you need at each position to have the right labor in the right place at the right time. And if they're not doing something, what's their secondary spot or the tertiary spot? It, it, it depends. It depends on how far you want to go. Then you integrate with the back of house system. And this is what I was telling you. Um, many back of house systems, software systems, will sell the, the, the system as a labor saver. And it does, by the way, because you're able to control the labor, no doubt. But it's all about what's in it. You know, garbage in, garbage out. So you want to make sure you have the right inputs from a work content perspective. And then you go and uh, test it, you implement it, and, and I put change management in red there is because it may require, actually it will require some change management because your operators are so used to doing what they do, how they do it, when they do it, that it's difficult at times to change. But if you don't change, you go the way of the dinosaur, and then you maintain it. Any system, 
uh, once you have it for, for some time and you make changes, whether it's a menu change, whether it's an equipment change, a layout change, you have to maintain it to keep accuracy. Otherwise, your managers won't, won't trust it. Prep is one of my favorite, favorite areas. And in the back of house efficiency uh, session I was in yesterday, we talked about prep. And here's some questions I, wanna, I want you to, to think about prep. Why do you do it? Because uh, that's how the, the founder did it, and his mother did it, and his grandmother did it, right? Why do you do it? Um, does a customer give you credit? Because if it doesn't, and it's costing you, why do you do it? Are you better off slicing and dicing uh, vegetables, or getting a supplier to get you sliced and diced vegetables? It's going to cost you more. Your food line is going to go up. But maybe your labor line will more than offset that. If it doesn't offset it now at 10 bucks an hour, it will offset it at 15 bucks an hour. I guarantee you that, right? So why do you do it? How do you do it? Do you slice, 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 slice? Do you use some of these processes that I told you? Are you efficient about it? Do you have the right station? Do you take 10 trips back and forth to get something done? Or do you take a cart over there, put it all in the cart, and bring it back, get it done, take it away, right? So the how do you do it is critical. When do you do it? And I'm going to touch on that a bit more when I show you a schedule. When do you do it? Uh, the old-fashioned way is in the morning. You got two or three people come in, in the morning, they do their thing, and they leave at some point in time. And how do you manage it? What systems do you have so it doesn't become an entitlement? What I mean by an entitlement, um, often I've seen that the prep person is a particular individual or two individuals that come in at 8 o'clock, and they leave at 2 every day. It doesn't matter how much they're making, how they're making it, that's what they do, right? So how do you manage it so that you know that today we're going to sell $3,000, so I should pre be prepping the equivalent of $3,000, which means that if on a day I'm selling $5,000, I should be prepping more than $3,000, and my schedule needs to reflect that. So a lot, a lot of questions around prep, and that's dri that drives process reengineering. OK, so let me bring this all together. We're about, about, uh, about the end of here. This is a schedule. I'll try to explain to you what it is. The blue. Sales, right? How your sales come in. The, the orange yellow is ideal hours. Ideal hours are the hours, the, the, the work content activity based hours that you need to run your business and give guest service. Forget prep at the moment, just guest service. And then in this case, the black is the actual staffing that the restaurant, you know, restaurant put together. This black right here. So as you look at the schedule, first thing you see is, yep, they're prepping in the morning. First thing you see, because that's how they do it, that's how they know it, and that's how it happens. So think about it. Uh, this restaurant opens at around 1030. By, by the time the first dollar of sales comes in, you've, you've spent all this labor there, right? Notice what happened here. It might peak lunch. And this is, happens probably at QSR more than anything, although, although it's got a couple of peaks. This is, this is what I need. This is what I got. Because that's all I can afford. Otherwise, if I bring the two more bodies I need, I'm going to have to give them a three or four hour shift. That's expensive. What have you done? You've curtailed yourself from throughput. Something's got to give. If you need a 12 and you've got 10, you've curtailed yourself on throughput. right? So you've, you're creating your own coffin. Then in the afternoon, you got a ton of labor. Actually, if you, if you come over here, the reverse is true from lunch. That's how much you need for guest service, and you need more than you have. So that's the architecture of a schedule. I bet if you go back to your restaurants, you'll see those more than often than, than you want to. But so, so what can you do? Well, you know what? Uh, remember the when do you do prep point? Well, when do I do this? Can I do it at another time? Can I do it over here? Because we know there's a ton of labor here, right? Look at, look at all that. You see that, that big gap in there? That's excess labor, let's call it. More than you need for guest service. So I would challenge you that with this. When you go back to your restaurants, or if you're a supplier and you work with a restaurant, tell them to do this. If you open at 10.30, right, tell them what do you need to do so that not a single body shows up until 10 o'clock. Right? I mean, first of all, their head's going to spin. I mean, they're going to say, you're crazy. You know, they say, where did you go, Denver? And you pa pass me the, the cannabis here. But that's what it takes. What do you need to do? And ask yourself, whatever I did before, can I do it at another time? 
And, and the reason you want to tell them that and the reason they want to do that or the reason you want to do that as an operator is because you will have labor savings without any automation. You see where I'm going? I teach you with automation. Automation is coming. But you got to do something while it arrives. And labor scheduling, it's a huge piece, is how do you use your labor? What techniques do you have? What tools do you have? What automated tools do you have? Big, big, big idea, big idea. So I'm going to close now. How are you planning to battle this, right? My suggestion to you in the short term is drive efficiency, reduce cost, reduce the right cost. I often tell a client, uh, you know, if, if what you want to do is reduce 200 basis points uh, on labor, you don't need me. You don't need me. But if you want to have the right labor in the right place at the right time and drive that 200 in that process, then you do need us. So, but under, it starts with understanding efficiency. What's going on today? Uh, and as you go along the way, keep your eyes on automation. Heck, even today, hopefully you now see that automation could be more than these Jetsons-like machines. Uh, and it gives you a different perspective on it. At the end of the day, remember what you're trying to do. You're trying to solve a labor problem. You're trying to solve a service problem. You don't really want to do automation in the restaurants, but you wanna, you're going to have to, right? In some shape, way, or form, you're going to have to as, as uh, rates continue to go up. I'm going to close with this. Uh, an article Jason wrote. You all got it probably at the beginning. Kind of teasers is what's coming. The title is Three Ways to Boost Restaurant Efficiency and Combat Labor Woes. First one is... Understand your labor efficiencies. It goes back to what I told you. Where are your inefficiencies? Understand them. Is it in the scheduling? Is it how you do things? Is it in the equipment you have? Is it in the layout you have? Is your workstation 15 feet or 30 feet, right? It, it all adds up. Is the equipment holding you back? And that's the second one, upgrade equipment. Equipment can be a, a, a facilitator of labor and throughput, let alone service, let alone uh, uh, consistency. So what's the right equipment? At the end of the day, and I often tell, tell clients, listen, it's not that I don't like your, your guests that come to your restaurants, it's that I love your employees a lot more. The center of our world as a functional industrial engineering designer revolves around the employees. You know, remember the, 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 what is it, a happy wife, a happy life, right? Well, happy employee, they'll make it happen. They'll make it happen. So let's make sure, and you heard from some of the, some of the, um, you know, the uh, Sweet Greens folks and some of the cultural stuff, Employees have to be in the center of the world. So how can equipment make it easier for them? And then get serious about automation. Keep your eyes and ears out for what the heck is going on. What can I use? How do I do manual today that a piece of equipment could help me with? Because at the end of the day, I have to deal with the labor issues. I don't want to sh deal with it by shortening my peak, like I, like I showed you on that schedule. But I, I see, and I would say 90% of the schedules that I see as we're beginning to work with clients, that's exactly what happens. They can't afford the extra two or three bodies at lunch, so they cut, cut it back. You just cut back your abilities to drive sales. Kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And get your hands dirty and think ahead. So, so with that, uh, I thank you for listening. I don't know if we have quite, uh, time for questions. Again, at, at the end of the day, you got, you got my information. This is going to be uh, in, uh, available to you. Uh, what we do is all about unit economics. And you can see on this, on this uh, circle there, our process starts with the employee. That's the center of our world. Because if you drive employee-centric designs and processes, they will drive hospitality, drive sales, profit. Everybody's happy. The brand will grow, guaranteed. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.